Hey everybody, welcome back to the second part where we're gonna try and uh, shade and give life to the flags that we modeled out in the first part. So, if you followed with the first part of the modeling uh, of these three flags, you're gonna basically end up with something similar like this uh, result. So I have the normal folded down flag or just a uh, falling down flag without any wind. We have the flag which has uh, the overlay on top of the cylinder and we have a flag attached to a line which is basically blown from wind. So with these three flags, let's see how we can uh, basically apply some quick uh, textures to it and get some uh, interesting looks for these flags. Now, when modeling flags, it can be kind of uh, specific because, well, uh, from my point of view, because when I'm choosing a flag, I want to uh, make it something interesting. So it's, well, it doesn't offend anybody. So in this case, I actually decided to go ahead and do something that I enjoy doing and that is I'm gonna take a few flags from one of my favorite games for a long time and that's Fallout and it has been a very uh, popular game lately so I'm pretty sure many of you have heard about it so for these three flags we're actually gonna go ahead and use three flags from within the game so I'm gonna go ahead and use for the first one I'm gonna use this flag which is basically more or less a uh, fan-based mate uh, flag. It's not an official flag in the game. Then for the second one, I'm gonna use the Brotherhood of Steel flag. And for the third one, I'm gonna use the NCR flag. I'm not sure, I don't think it's in the Fallout 4 uh, game so far, but we're gonna go with those three flags. So, flags are pretty much easy to do. All you gotta do is, let's go ahead. For the first one, I'm gonna apply this material. For the second one, this one. And the third one, that one. All right, so all we have to do is, in the diffuse slot, just pull in the image that you want to use. So, one here, and I click on show shaded material. Right away, you're gonna see it appear here. Click here, pull the second flag. There we go, the Brotherhood of Steel. And let's go with the NCR flag as well. Okay, so we have these three flags. Now, the thing is that if you're gonna use them like this, you can pretty much just go ahead and render out like this. You're gonna get something similar like this, depending on what kind of lighting you have in your scene. It might uh, give it a better look to it, but more or less you can call it done and just be done with it. Or if you're gonna use it like uh, this, you might want to give it a bit more character. And the main reason for me wanting to do this video is so I can show you guys how you can uh, use masks to help you achieve a more torn out or an old look flag uh, feel to your flag. This can be used for a flag that's outside in the desert somewhere or basically anywhere that it would stay for a prolonged period of time. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to use another map. So let me go ahead and open up Photoshop and here in Photoshop I actually went over to Google and I googled out uh, damaged flag and basically I found an image like this so you can, as you can see it's <laughs> I'm not sure if this is uh, one of the flags that have been used uh, in the civil wars in America I might be wrong I might be not maybe not doesn't matter really uh, what it matters is it's pretty uh, torn up, as you can see. It has taken a lot of damage. So this is an ideal image to use. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to open it inside Photoshop. So what I want to do from here is I want to 
take an actual and make a mask out of this. So for this, I'm going to uh, hold on Control N and make a new document that's 2000 by 1000. So if you remember when we made the actual flags, we made them at a two by one ratio. So two by one. OK. So we have this. Awesome. So I'm going to go back to my flag and now with the selection here I'm gonna make a selection like this so something more in line like this and I'm going to crop this awesome okay so I'm gonna click here and drag it into my other document over here control T hold down shift so I'm going to transform this. I'm going to hold down shift and drag it downwards. So it's scaling uniformly till about here. I'm just going to move it till about here. Okay. Now I'm actually going to give it a bit more width down to something like this. Okay. So what I want to do here is quite simply. When I have this flag selected, I'm going to go over here and click on Magic Wand Tool or W and click anywhere on the white. So click here, hold down Shift, click here. So I select all of that white on top of it as well. And as it is uh, right now, I'm going to press Control J. That is going to make a new a layer from my selection. So if I turn this off and control click on this layer, I can see that I have uh, a selection. Now I'm going to go with the paint tool and just paint it black. Not a tool, but the paintbrush and paint it black. So I have something like this. Now I'm gonna hide this new layer again and get back to the flag. I can choose to take any other piece that I like. So hold on shift again, just click a few more of these damages here. Something like this, maybe even something like this. Ah, there we go. And again, control J, hide this, control click on the layer is going to select everything inside. And again, with the uh, brush, painted black, something like this, unhide the top and we get a look like this. So now once we have this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it as a JPEG and I'm going to call this flag damage. I'm going to go save. And click OK. All right, so back to Max. All right, so with the mask that we just made, we can go ahead and give it some interesting look to our flag. So let's take our uh, Brotherhood of Steel flag over here. And like we saw previously, let me just render one more time. And as you can see, this flag looks just like it's brand new. So with the mask that we just made, I'm going to scroll down to the maps and in the opacity map over here, I'm simply going to take and drag in the flag damage that we just made. So I'm going to close this down. Actually, not, I'm not going to close it down, but I'm simply going to construct it so I can only render this portion over here. I'm going to go inside of flag damage and I'm going to re-render it again and see what happens now as, I, as soon as I start rendering this flag. You're going to notice that all of the places that we had uh, a white color are now visible while all of the places that had black color are now invisible or they look like they've been torn out. So let's open it up like this. 
and if you put it right next to each other, you can notice that with the math that we just made, we can see that same result being transferred here. Now, the only thing that can be an issue when you're doing something like this is if you're going to zoom in, you're going to notice a small outline, this outline over here, which is basically telling you where your flag is ending. The reason for this outline showing is quite simple because whenever you're working inside 3ds Max and you import a map or a bitmap, Max likes to give it a bit of a blur. So it makes all the melding of maps together uh, more uh, distress free. So in this case, I want to decrease that blur. So in the blur here, I'm going to press 0.01. That's the lowest you can get. So there's that's basically zero blur. And if you take a look at the edges now, as soon as I re-render, those edges should be gone. And you can see they're no longer there. So we have the damage to our flag and we don't have any of that blur problem with how it's gonna look. Okay, and there we go. That's for our um, Brotherhood of Steel flag. We can pretty much do the same to the other ones. Or um, let's go over to our NCR flag, or this is the second flag over here. And for this one, I'm simply going to use a different... Uh, map this is the one i used previously as you can see it's just like the one that we made but with a small difference uh everything outside it's uh white while everything inside is black opposed to what we have here but it can happen that sometimes when you're making your masks you can instead of painting black like i did here you can paint white and you end up with a, a mask like this so what gives? How do you make this uh, work for you? Because as it is right now on the second map that I made previously, if I put it in the opacity map, so let's go ahead and drag it inside the opacity. And if I render it out, you're going to see a really quirky look here. So everything is flipped. In case you do this, again, I'm going to decrease the blur. As we saw previously, it was an issue. If you get an issue like this, this is not a big issue and it can easily be fixed. All you have to do is scroll down to the output and invert the, the map. In this case, if we render it out again, now everything is working as intended. So uh, now, depending on what kind of a flag you would like to have, if it's a silk flag, you can give it some uh, reflect, uh, reflective abilities. If it's a woven one or uh, maybe a wool one, you can give it some bump. So it's all up to you. But this video was basically to show you how you can give your flags a quick and uh, easy way to make them look weathered out and damaged. So again, I hope you guys like this video as well. So if you manage to learn something new, then simply like, subscribe, comment and share it around so it can reach more people and hopefully help them out the same way it helped you. So take care and I'll see you all in the next video.